let's look at Hebrews. And, and I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to pray uh, after we read these scriptures. Can we read it? Yes. Let's go. Uh, I want you to read just the first couple. I know we have the whole scripture up here, but we're going to read the first couple of verses, and then we're going to jump down. Is that all right? Verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By, by what? By faith the elders obtain a good testimony. Let's jump down to verse 6, and then verse 7, and then we're going to pray. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, move with godly fear, fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Let's look at verse 7 again. By faith, Noah, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Le Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Let it leap off the pages into our heart, anoint our hearts, our minds, and our ears, that we may receive, understand, and hear. Heavenly Father, let people see past me and at you at the cross, for in you is life and life everlasting. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. <clears throat> in everything we do, it requires faith. You know, that for you to come to church this, uh, this day, it required you to have enough faith that you know that you won't have problems coming here. Think about it. A lot of people say, you know what, I, uh, I don't have any faith, Pastor. Uh, I, I live my life and I, what I can see is what I can do. The reality is you don't see a lot of things, but you still do it out of faith. You know, today well, we're going to go down to this burger joint uh, that they said that we're going to go down. And you know what? I don't see the chef back there or the cook back there. And, and yet I will have faith that they will cook my hamburger just the way I like it. And I'm going to eat it, and I have faith enough to know that I'm not going to go get sick. You know how I know? Because I'm going to have to pay for it. <laughs> right? I have enough faith to pay for a meal. I don't see how it's prepared. I don't see the man in the back or the woman in the back making it. It's going to make it proper. But I have faith. How come I have faith? Because they put a sign up? No, it's because hopefully that this place that they are trying to establish has gotten the right certification and the right people that's qualified. See, that's the same way in yours and my life, that <clears throat> oftentimes we wonder if we have faith, that the reason why most people don't have faith is because they never qualify in the things they do with the things that have been established. See, I mean, uh, we're going to have a little steak before we have burgers, so we're just going to do that. The reason why a lot of times people lack faith is because they build faith without any place or standard to verify their faith. It's the same thing. I would not go into places that is, you know, uh, oftentimes you're not going to go have a nice meal uh, in a co corner of a street with a guy with just a plastic table and he's got a, 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 a little propane gas thing on the side and you're like, no, nah, no, nah. you know, my wife, she's like, no, nah, I'm not eating that. Why? It's because there has nothing been established as a standard. So for us to build uh, our life by faith, what is your faith standard? Oh, that's good. What is your faith based on? Is it just hearsay by somebody? Or is it uh, uh, old tales that has, can't be verified? The, uh, or is it just whimsical thinking and, 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 and uh, uh, no common sense? You know, I, I often see people believe the things of God is because they hear somebody else say and then they never check it with the Bible. And so they just believe. And then people look at them and say, you're crazy, man. 
And so that faith has never been verified. And so when they live their life based on no standard and they base it on standards of this world or other people, then other people look at their Christianity and say, I don't want any of that because that's just crazy. It is just you just believe in out of anything. What is your reference? See, for us to build faith, our reference has to be this 66 book called the B-I-B-L-E, which is the Bible. And that's the book for me. If it's not based on the word of God, then you have no standard whereby you can build. Oh, gee. Oh, that's good stuff, y'all. Are you, we all awake today? Yeah. <clears throat> Something happened? See, uh, uh, oftentimes we build our faith on men's wisdom. And the problem with men's wisdom, it is fleeting. Men's wisdom is always fleeting. Right? Uh, I remember uh, when I was in school and they remember all of a sudden one day the psychologists say, you know what, you should never uh, um, uh, uh, spank your children. It, it's bad. They're going to go, it's so bad, don't ever do it. You're going to ruin their life. They will never have self-esteem, right? And now today they say, you know, a little bit is okay. Wait, so when you're telling me, right, there, there was an article way back about 10 years, 15 years ago, don't eat eggs, don't eat eggs. Eggs are terrible. You know, they're bad for you. It's too much cholesterol and eggs are bad. Now I'm reading articles, oh, eat an egg a day, keep the doctor away. So it's the same doctor, the same medicine that's telling you, don't do it, don't do it. Then there was an article, don't drink coffee. Coffee's bad for you. And, you know, I remember reading that article. Somebody came to me. I said, man, people have been drinking coffee for thousands of years. And then don't drink tea. Got too much caffeine. Chinese people have been drinking tea for over 5,000 years. It's fine. Okay, now they're like, oh, yeah, a little tea. Give. If a man drinks five cups of green tea a day, it'll drop his pr chance of getting prostate cancer by 52%. And I'm like, you told us not to drink tea. So what do you do? That's why our life cannot be built on men's wisdom. It has to be built by faith on the standard. Amen. Can we help ourselves? See, here the Bible says, by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. You know what? Faith does something to you when you have true faith. It'll give you a couple things. I'm going to give you about four things, maybe three things, three to four things. Faith allows you to see things you haven't seen. What? Faith allows you to see things you haven't seen. Look at what the Bible says. By faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Wait a minute. How can you be warned of something you haven't seen? It only comes through one thing, faith. That's why when you, when you are a person of faith, it'll help you navigate between troubles. See, it will help you to know what to do when you don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do. You know, today... Oftentimes, we leave at a certain time every day for, or, or every week on Sunday, okay, usually, because uh, one of my daughters, you know, they, they have to go to a practice, and then we pick her up before service, and la, la, la. But today, all of a sudden, um, I had everything ready, and I was extra early. It was funny. I, my wife came and said, honey, um, you want me to cook something for lunch? And today, I said, no, we're just going to pick up something. And, and I usually leave at a certain time every week, and we're always about that time. But today, it seemed like we left about 45 minutes prior to our leaving. And I didn't know why. I didn't have any idea why I had this feeling. And when I told the girls, and usually they're always running late, and they always say, Daddy, because we're girls, I said, no, it's just because you're running late. <laughs> but today, all of a sudden, they're ready, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, Wow. Miracles do happen, <laughs> right? And next thing you know, I was getting ready, leaving. I looked at my phone. We're leaving extra early. One of, uh, you know, Sean said, Pastor, um, you wouldn't happen to have any jumper cables in your car, do you? And I said, why? He goes, I'm stuck over here off of the Katy Freeway. My car wouldn't start, and I think my battery's gone. I said, really? 
He said, would you come by? And you lo and behold, we left extra early. Guess what? It was on the way to where we needed to drop off one of uh, uh, Luciana, our daughter. It was just down the street. And we were able to eat lunch all at the same time. And I thought to myself, that is a person of faith because there are things that are unseen. That's why you cannot live by the standards of this world. You have to live by what is inside you. And his name is Jesus. See, you have to understand that things happen for a reason. And if you're a man of faith or a person of faith or a woman of faith, then you have to understand that God has your hand, your life in his hand. And that things happen and you've got to be patient and look at things. And, and you imagine this man named Noah. Anybody know the story of Noah? He, he was like 600 years old or, you know, 500 years old. And the Lord says to him, he goes, there's, I'm going to warn you, there's some, a big flood coming. Did you know it took 100 years to build that ark? 100 years. 100 years. So faith allows you to see things that can't be seen. You know, in Mark chapter 8, uh, verse 23, there was a blind man. And he want, Jesus came across him. He says, so Jesus took, him, took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And we had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men walking like trees. This is a blind man. See, the thing about faith is this. It is, it re does not require your physical senses. You know what? When you can't see where you're going and Jesus grabs you by the hand, you will see then. See, faith allows you to see things that you normally wouldn't see. You wouldn't see it. You don't know how it happened, but if you have enough faith that God can hold you by the hand like this blind man and walk you to a place and God will leave you or lead you and leave you in the place that he wants to bless you. But this is what happens if that man who was blind, the Bible says, and Jesus grabs him by the hand to take him. He said, no, I'm not going. No, because I can't see. We know you can't see. You couldn't see anyway. You know, it's like I see that with people. It's like God is pulling them and they don't want to go. They're like, because I don't want to, I don't want to see, you know, I can't see. We know you couldn't see sitting here. Why don't you follow God anyway? See, the problem with most of us is we want to do it. We want to believe God our way in our time at our convenience. But if this man would have just let go, there's some of us that need to just let go. And say, God, I'll follow you. Maybe some of you say, well, Lord, I, I don't know if I have enough faith to give because I don't have any money. We know. Just give anyway. You broke anyway. Why don't you just give and see what God leads you to? You know, Lord, I, I have brokenness in my life. We know. I have pain in my life. We know. But if you would just allow God to lead you out of that broken place, lead you out of that place you haven't yet seen, leave you out of that place and say, God, I want to plant myself here. I know I don't know where I am. And people are telling me, but God will lead you to the right place if you would just let go. Look at your name and say, just let go. We hold on too tight. You ever notice that? When we hold on really tight, we kill whatever God trying to birth through us. You know, it's like holding a bird. You don't want to hold the bird too tight. You'd kill that bird. Right? You know, you ever people, do you ever hold a baby, an infant, a newborn tight? No, you don't. You hold the baby just the right amount of pressure. See, there's a lot of things in our life we hold on too tight. And when we hold on too tight, there's no place to grow. It's like having a tree put in a pot. You ever see a person plant a tree in a pot and you never, it, you never, you, you, it never gets out of that pot? But the moment that pot breaks, boom, that tree grows to whatever its capability is. But when it stays in that pot, it'll never grow. You've got to learn to let go. The other thing, number two, faith gives us wisdom from God to move and build. You know, could you imagine this? People looking at Noah, say, what is he building? Uh-huh. Man, 
It's been 50 years. What is he building? Right? He sure used a lot of wood at the lumber yard. Now he's so crazy, he got his kids involved. He's just crazy. Right? 60 years go by. You know, could you imagine his father and mother-in-law uh, talking to his wife, Mrs. Noah? Mrs. Noah? Said, you married the wrong man. You know, Mrs. Noah, you married the wrong. You imagine all her friends at the tea party. You married a crazy man. They're putting this structure in the back of your house, and it's not even on the water. It's on land. And you're telling me it's an ark. It's supposed to float. How are you going to float on land? And you build it in the Middle East. It's sand. You ever been to the Middle East? I've been. It's just sand. And you build it in the backyard on land. It's taking you 60 years. And you keep saying that God told you something is about to come and you don't see it. See, the problem is this. Faith avoids people's opinions. Oh, if you like people's opinions, you won't, you won't need faith. You see, faith requires you to be deaf and blind to what people say and what you see people do. Oh, you see, you, you don't hear me. That's the good stuff right here. I'm serious. See, what happens is you have to be okay if you're a person. If you want to build, uh, uh, if you want to have faith to build something great in your life, in God's kingdom, whatever it is, you have to be, have the ability to ignore other people's opinions. What do you mean you're going to put a church in a cafe? What do you mean you're going to worship in a place where they're cooking stuff? And in front of us, what do you mean you're going to call this church? I can't, what? What are you going to, what does ASAP mean? Well, I don't get it. What do you mean you're going to, you have to be able to ignore other people's opinion. If you can't do that, you're going to have a hard time building great things into your life. You know, if, if, you, if you can't ignore what people think about what you're doing for God, then you're going to have a really, really, really hard time. If you can't ignore uh, that God told you uh, to do something and all you hear is people's opinion, how come you don't do it? I can't believe you built this ark. It's been 60, 70 years and nothing. You keep saying, you crazy, man. And if it's a boat, why you don't put it in the river or in the ocean? You put it in the backyard on sand and now you got your three boys and their wives doing the same thing. You crazy. If you can't deal with people calling you crazy because you know what God gave you to do, then it's going to be difficult for you to see your destiny. Oh, see, faith gives you wisdom. Now, Noah, how does he know to build an ark? Nobody's ever done it before. He didn't have a blueprint. But see, faith gives you wisdom. God will give you the answer and strategies. What I should say is this. Faith gives us wisdom and strategy to know when to move and how to build. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I counsel a lot of uh, young couples, as you know. And there's always people that have been married long or this and that. And they always have opinions about certain things. And, and I always tell people like this, what works for one marriage might not work for another marriage. But the principle, the foundation of the marriage has to be upon God's word. Do you understand? You know, it, it's funny. Uh, there are sometimes people have opinions that, oh, man, girl, if it was me, I wouldn't let my man do that. Well, she isn't you. See, you have to learn what God, you have to pray for wisdom to build your family. You have to pray and understand how your spouse functions. You have to pray and understand how your children function. I have three kids, and every one of them are different. I, I would say something to one of them, and they would just cry. I don't even have to raise my voice. But the other one, I could put the fear of God in her. <laughs> Truly. One of them, I just look at her and she goes, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. The other one, 
You can wave a stick. You can threaten. And t- uh. <laughs> what? You come from the same me and you. What? Why? It's because why? God has designed you for your own purpose and your own destiny. See, we don't get this kind of stuff in the church because nobody's trying to build you in a way. You have to understand something. It says this in James 5, 1 through uh, 6. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to you all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Did you know faith will give you strategies? Most people don't know where it comes from. Faith will, God will give, by faith, God will give you wisdom to how to fix things. Did you know that by faith that God will help you? I'm, ta- I'm talking about all of us have the same principle, but each principle for your life uh, begins to build. All of us have the foundation of the word of God. All of us have the foundation of the Holy Spirit living in us, which is Christ himself living us. Those are the faith. All of us know that Jesus Christ is the one that we must believe only and only him and that he died for our sin. He was perfect. He died on the cross by the shedding of his blood and by his resurrection and seated the right hand of the Father. That's the foundation of our faith, of Christianity. But in that, every one of us has something that God desires for us to do. And you have to have faith. And faith, you've got to be okay with somebody not agreeing with what you're doing for God. See, I have a saying like this, and you, some of you know in my leadership training, is leader, true, true, the key word is true leadership is really not about leading anybody. It's about inspiring others to be their best. See, my best in an area might be two stars, but you are five star, but I'm giving my best in that area. But you could be a two star in one area, I'm a five star in that area. Does that make sense? And so leadership is not saying, oh, you're no good. Well, you're no good at that, but you're no good at what I'm doing. See? And so our leadership in God must be, God is always saying, hey, I want you to love and do these things. And, and that's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron. You know, it's like when I, I listen to the musicians, you know, I, I don't understand how somebody can just pick up an instrument and play on a bow or pick up a guitar and they can say, well, that's, that's, that's the key of C. How do you know that? Right? And then how can somebody just sing so beautifully and you're like, wow, you just mesmerize. You know, we can do two things. You can get jealous of it or you can enjoy it. i rather enjoy it and say, wow, I get to be in that place. Ooh, I love that. You know what? Enjoy other people's blessings. Enjoy other people's gifts. Enjoy, and that way you learn to appreciate your own gift. You see what I'm saying? You know, it's like there's some people that are great cooking, and they have a passion for it. To me, it is confusing a lot of times. (laughs) I burn water, you know what I'm saying? One time I really did. A pot was empty. I was like, oh, man, I forgot to put the... It happens. So whatever you do, when you look at other people, appreciate them. You know what? They might not be a five-star in the area you are, but you're a not a five-star in the area they are. You see, we got all these things ranking, right? We, we give a five-star into a restaurant or a four-star. Oh, you know, this and that. You know what? We, can, we do that oftentimes with people, and they don't deserve that because they're doing their best. Right? And so we have to think that faith gives us wisdom. Third thing, faith gives us strategies. Have you ever wondered why certain people do certain things and you just don't understand it? Some of them just crazy, but I'm not saying those people. I'm just saying that there are certain things. You know, there's maybe some of you have questioned uh, and, and, and wondered, maybe not a negative. Every time we think about, oh, don't question me as a negative, I don't take it as a negative. When people question why we do certain things, to me, it's a chance for me uh, to relate to them. It's a chance to me uh, to respond to them. It's a chance for me uh, and them to learn. 
You know, uh, uh, I learned that through corporate uh, uh, world, you know, that I, I, I used to sell for a company. And, and when you sell something to a corporation or another company, you know what? It used to be when people come back and say, hey, when they negotiate price, it used to be a negative. But that's the wrong way of thinking. You know why? Because if they weren't interested in buying your product, they would never negotiate with you in the first place. Oh, that, see, I'm just teaching you a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole different level this year. Think about it. If they didn't care about your product, why would they even call you? <laughs> if they didn't care to talk to you, why would they call you? Why would they even come? Have you ever met people that you don't care to talk to? You wouldn't even ask them a question. You just walk away. But if they take the time to ask you a question, don't take it as, why are you coming at me like that? I'm not. I'm just asking a question. Because if people genuinely care about you and you get offended because they ask you a question, if they really don't care about you, they would never ask, even bother you, don't lose your phone number, erase it off their phone. <laughs> lose your email. That's the same thing I learned through sales. That's the same thing I learned in corporate world. Don't ever get offended when somebody asks you uh, for a better price because that means they're interested. Now you just got to work out the detail. Don't ever get offended when people ask you a question of why you do certain things. Don't sit there and take it as offensive. Why are you asking me? It's, it's an opportunity for all of us to learn. That's why faith gives us strategies. That's why there's things that you do that maybe God is showing you that I don't know. But if you would share your faith with me, if I can see your faith, but like, wow, that is so neat. If I can see your faith in the process, then I can be uplifted and I can be encouraged by your faith. See, if we can't see your faith, then I can never understand why you do what you do. You know, I mean, all of you, if I were to sit here and took time and tell you how I see, some of you have blessed me. Did you know that? I know a lot of you, Pastor, how can I bless you? No, I just watch your life, and there are certain things from my, my own family, my own brother-in-law, my own sister, uh, by my friends, by Danny, by Sean, by Ann, some of you, by Matt and Andrea, by, by Mark. I see how your life is, and I've learned from it, and have been encouraged by it, by Peter and Mary, and by encouraged by your faith. Because I can see your faith. And when people can see your faith, they will love you and learn from you. And they will begin to appreciate. Thank you for sharing with me your faith. Last thing. Faith makes us heirs of righteousness. Oh, I like this one. You know, the, the only time you ever hear the word heir, H-E-I-R, it has to do with royalty. See, a lot of people... Walk around, they don't think that you're anything. Oh, I'm nobody, Pastor. I used to be just like that. I was a Christian, born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, had an intelligent mind, but oh, I'm just a nobody. You know? I'm just a nobody. You know, when you do something great, you know, people try to have this humility. You know, oh, you did a great job, you know, instead of saying thank you, you know, thank you for your support. They they try, oh, you know, it ain't me, I ain't nobody. Don't do that. You won't see the kings and queens do that. You won't see the prince of, of, uh, uh, or the princesses of any country do that. You know what they do? They say, thank you. That's it. But we try to be humble, and to me, that's not humility. Because a king's kid don't talk like that. A king's child does not talk like that. They don't walk with their head down. They don't say, oh, I'm nobody. I'm worthless. I didn't do it. Oh, God, I give God all the glory. That doesn't give God glory. Think about it. It's really not humility. It's actually you are using words to curse yourself and death. Faith makes us heirs of righteousness. And any time you read about heirs, it has to do with royalty. And royalty thinks different. Royalty walks different. Royalty lives different. Lo royalty are people that live in a different standard than most. We are joint heirs, a royal priesthood, the Bible says. Right? So why don't we live at a different standard? It doesn't matter what you look like. It's how you think. You know, I, I remember... Preaching words 
in my life. God's making me speak words that I was dealing with and I haven't seen victory in. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why do you make me preach about things like this and I have yet to gain victory in that life? He said, that's why it's called faith. See, that's why you, it's called faith. Because faith is not yet, what? Seen. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Don't you hope that it will happen? Yes. And it says, the evidence of things not yet seen, not seen. That means, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is that faith that is the substance of the things that you desire that you haven't seen. Because that hope will come. And it says, and when that faith becomes manifest, it becomes evidence of the things that you haven't seen yet. And one day, Noah wakes up, and it's 100 years later, and all those people making fun of him, the rain starts. See, people stop making fun of you when the rain starts. Oh. See, people stop making fun and getting down, and, and all your family and all your friends are against you until the rain starts. See, people used to say, oh, uh, you can't do that until the rain starts. Oh, you, you would never do this until the rain starts. Oh, you would never do And all of a sudden, your influence becomes supernatural, and people begin to be blessed by your life. But you got to start from the one piece of board. you got to start from that one nail. You've got to start by that one place in the backyard and all of a sudden you've got to build and you have to build and you have to have faith. God, I don't see, I don't see no rain. It's a desert out here. Okay. I mean, come on, Lord. I mean, you should have sent me to like Southeast Asia. At least got monsoon season. Right. But he's asking Noah to build in the middle of the desert on dry land. Nobody will make fun of you when the rain starts. And Noah, uh, people start stop talking about him, being negative about him when the rain started coming. And the animals started coming. And they're like, what? what? How'd you get all those animals in here? It ain't me, man. God just, just flip a switch with them. They started finding me. It's amazing that people will stop and, uh, talking about you when the rain starts and the animal starts following you. Now, I'm not talking about people, but I'm talking about influence. When things start happening around your life, people will begin to notice God. See, you've got to faith, take faith and build your life. Don't just waste it away and just say, ah, oh, it ain't me. You know, for, for me, people uh, always desire certain things, but I always try to tell them, prepare your life for it. You know, it's funny, a, a friend of mine told me today, and he said, man, I, I got to get my old suit out now and dust it off because God's about it. I said, yeah, that's prophetic, brother. And I started prophesying to him and started saying, your life is about to change a whole different way. God's bringing you to a whole new, new status in life. I said, yeah, God knew you can get your hands dirty. Yeah, God knew you can get down and get in the dirt, but God's trying to get you a different place. And I said, there's a, there's a moment in your life that when you've been faithful to the things of God, the rain will start. And when that rain starts, it won't stop. And so faith is those things. See, we, we, we just want in church, um, God just doesn't, doesn't want us just to live holy and, and point fingers and say, oh, look at this. Oh, you're going to break the gates of hell wide open. No, because you're the royal priesthood. You are God's, and God want to get you to live a life that is a dominant life, that not only you have dominion over things he created, but you have dominion in the spiritual things. God never gave us dominion over people. He gave us do dominion over the things he created I had a friend of mine call me yesterday he doesn't even live here but he's a very good businessman it's funny because one of my other friends have never met him in person we they just met each other on the internet you know through the internet you know through the technology of all these video conference things and it's funny because the my friend that drove from another city to visit this businessman friend of mine who was very successful, walk into his business. He goes, oh, man, when you told me you had a business, I thought it was just a little thing. I didn't know it was so big. And he 
So my business friend man called me, friend, said, hey, brother, you know what's funny? I said, what? He goes, you were right. I said, well, what? He goes, we all have a place in God. And I said, right. Your gift is business creation and ideas. You know how to take something and make it. You know, my, my gift is this. Your gift is it. He goes, wow. I never, he said, you know, it wasn't that he didn't believe me, but he said, man, I never saw it until now. You see, every one of you have something, but when we hide our faith, when we don't share our faith, why don't we be intentional and walk out and touch somebody's life this year? You know, a lot of people think that we, we are so humble, but the reality is it's our pride that keeps us from sharing our faith. You know, I, I used to have that, and, and one day I remember talking about, I was always afraid about talking about, um, there was times where I had struggles in my marriage. And you guys, some of you heard this. I don't, <clears throat> I don't deny it. If you've, been, if you've ever been married, you know you're going to have troubles. You don't want it. But there's two, you got two grown people who don't, di- who, who going to have some disagreements. True? You're going to have disagreements. And I remember being ashamed of going to marital counseling, right? Being ashamed of it. Like, I don't want nobody to know. I mean, I'm, I'm a pastor. And I, you know, I used to go to counseling with my pastors, and I don't want to know. And you know what the Lord told me? He says, why would you have a shame of something that you have victory over? See, that's, that's our problem. We keep looking at the past. Remember what I told you about money? We keep living in the past. But the investment is in the future. Oh, and guess what? Look, listen, listen to me. What help you need is not what's behind you. It's what's ahead of you. And the things that need for you to be delivered is not what has been passed and you have lost. It is ahead of you. And the problem is this. We keep trying to get help from the things of the past that's gone. Instead of looking forward into the things that God has. I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. And see, we keep blaming what we didn't get. We keep blaming for why we didn't get. We keep blaming uh, uh, things that are broken in our families uh, when we were children. We keep blaming in the past. But the past, the things that was taken from you, the thing that was lost to you, that can't help you. But we keep trying to get that to help us when we should immerse ourselves in the things that will help us. And that's the things of forward. That's the things of tomorrow. That's the things that we build on today. See, that. Is faith. You know, as we come to a close this afternoon, I'd like for all of us to stand.